All right, all right, all right. We've got some framing done back here. Uh, as you can see, I got used beams and new studs. I'm okay with the used beams because I'm really going for a rustic look back here. And uh, it's fine that they're a little beat up. Um, I'm going to go over some of the techniques that I used back here. And in the industry, this would be called stick framing. And basically what that is, is you use the area and the measurements that you're presented with and you kind of build off of those areas. So as you can see, I followed the seating area in the back and kind of framed it up the best I could to match that. And of course we used some clips and these clips, I didn't, didn't purchase these clips either. I, I had a bunch of framing that I acquired for free and basically just cut the framing up and cut the the track up into these small clips that I'm able to stick everywhere to kind of add support. I also did some inset screws and added some rigidity. Um, the next area that I'm going to tackle is going to be the seating area and I'm trying to keep this build as simple as possible to uh, save some time and some dollars. And if you guys are following me on Instagram, you know that I did just spend a few dollars on this lovely new stove. Well, 1940s stove, so it's not really new. But it is cool. And I did hook it up, and it does work. It doesn't seem like it has any leaks, but it does need some love and it does need some panels. Some of the panels are rusted out need to be replaced especially the cooking areas but I'm pretty stoked about that and I'm pretty stoked about getting some of this framing done because it's really pulling uh, together some of the ideas that I have of this living space and uh, I'm sure you guys can see it too Good morning guys, Garlander here, and uh, we're going to go with some natural lighting today, mostly because my garage lighting has short-circuited, probably from this leaky-ass garage and a shit ton of rain that we've been getting recently. But we are sharing the temp lighting with the bus in the garage, just kind of moving it back and forth, no big deal. Also I've been running into a lot of video and editing problems. So I'm going to skip over some of the long, boring footage I have of me carrying lumber in and out of the bus and making cuts over and over and over again. Also, I didn't really want to make this channel only about that. I really do want to help you guys if you are going to build your own bus. And I'm really hoping to inspire some of you guys to be creative or maybe find a dream that you've been looking for and to go after it. So... If you're experiencing any of those things or receiving any of that help from any of these videos that I'm making, please let me know because in the end that's what I want to hear. Um, I don't have a lot of experience in building buses, but I do have a lot of experience in managing construction projects just like this. Uh, something like building a bus is really not just one project, it's a magnitude of projects put together. So a good idea is to really keep lists of each individual project and steps on the list from importance to least important. And there is a cosmic order to all these things that you should be following. But keep in mind that they're not all going to go according to plan. And sometimes it's going to be hard for you to decide on things when you need to decide on them, which is something that I'm dealing with right now. Uh, one of the things I want to do next is frame out the bed area. Uh, I have this extravagant suspended bed that's going to go back here with a seating area below. And I'm having a hard time deciding how I want to construct this inlaid table underneath it. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to kind of skip over that, keep it on the back of my mind, and start working on some of this other stuff. I really need to add some lumber to this area to complete some of the seating back here. So I'm going to do a lot of 
wood prepping right now and I'm gonna hopefully get this seat installed for you guys by the end of the All right guys, here we are in front of the bus in the backyard and uh, as you can see, I got a huge ass propane tank back there. I uh, picked that up online, pretty great deal. And I got a little torch laid out. So, uh, if you haven't guessed it, by the title of this video, we're gonna be doing some shoshugi ban. And that's a Japanese technique of preserving the wood where they burn the grains and uh, they, they, it helps preserve the wood, it helps uh, you know, protect it against fire in some cases. And it looks really cool. It uh, makes the grains pop. And uh, some of the stuff that I'll show you, I think you'll agree with me. The first burn I'm doing here is more of a deep burn. It's more traditionally used and it gives you that three-dimensional grain that I was talking about. You really want to blacken the top of your board. The knots will tend to burn far slower than the rest of the board, so you probably should start with that. I found it best to work with a wire brush, uh, working with the grain of the wood always. You're really trying to knock down the softer areas of the wood, leaving behind the, the harder grains, which is really going to give you that 3D effect. The wire brush leaves behind a lot of scratch marks, so you use a finer grit paper to get in between the grains. And we're going to use a polyurethane to top it off. This is when the magic really starts happening. You can see right away all the colors and, and uh, depth that the process has added to the wood. Keep in mind, the more you sand down the inside of those grains, the lighter the areas will become. The process does take quite some time, so you tend to get a little intimate with your piece of wood. And then once you add that top coat, uh, can't recall how many times I said wow out loud looking at this piece. I got pretty lucky. It takes many layers of the polyurethane to get it this wet looking, but it's hard to be disappointed with the way this one turned out. When I told people I was going to be using a lot of wood to build inside of the bus, and a lot of people kept uh, suggesting that I use the Shoshugi Bond technique and uh, I was hesitant to use it at first because a lot of people are using it, it's very popular. Uh, it's easy to see why, you get some pretty cool results. Uh, this next piece, we're going to do what I call a charred layer. And you're going to burn about the top eighth inch of the board thoroughly. Uh, enough that it creates cracks in the grains. And this is really going to be the piece that protects you against fire and water the most. Um, and it's probably the easiest piece to do because it doesn't require really any prepping and all you're doing is putting a clear coat on it after. Um, it does absorb the clear coat so you're still going to need to use a couple layers to get uh, a very glossy finish. As you can see the grains are a lot shinier than the rest of the board so it still adds a little bit of a 3D effect. I really like both of these techniques, but I'm going to take a different approach when it comes to doing the seating area. So here I got all my pieces laid out, cut, and prepped for the seating area in the back. Now with the shorter pieces, I'm going to do a Shoshugi Ban surface burn with a clear poly finish. And on the longer pieces, I'm going to do a Jacobean finish with a very light Shoshugi Bond surface burn just to kind of bring the grains out a little bit. Oh, 
Now, when you're doing the surface burn technique, you're doing exactly that. You're just burning the surface of the grains. It's going to darken up just those grain areas. And then when you add any type of finish on top of that, it's going to really pull out some darkness in those grain areas, which is what I'm anticipating. All right, got all my pieces nice and crispy. Got my bench pieces. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to stain these lighter pieces with a Jacobi stain. And um, it's getting pretty late now, so that's probably all I'm gonna be able to do tonight. And then in the morning, I'm gonna hit everything with a coat of poly. So that stain should be nice and dry in the morning. So starting off with the Jacobine. They're the burnt pieces that are gonna get poly, which is just clear. And these are the Jacobine. And they will uh, alternate. So hopefully it'll add a cool effect. But uh, when you're doing your stain, at least the way that I'm doing it is I'm just rubbing it on. not really leaving any excess on there just kind of rubbing it on and off at the same time you can already see the effect that it gives it which is pretty cool I'm digging it so far staining done last night and all of my firework done last night which is a good thing because it's getting really windy out here and we don't want to start any more California fires but I got the pieces laid out in the order that they're gonna be installed on the bus and I did handpick all the pieces to try to get the best grain uh, patterns that I could find uh, especially this back piece because it's gonna be visible pretty much from the front of the bus. Uh, I picked these two darker pieces here because they were essentially the same grain and they mirror each other, which I thought was pretty cool. And then I broke it up with this piece in the center here, which has a lot of bark left over on it, which kind of looked like scales, which was interesting to me, interesting enough to showcase it. So that turned out pretty cool. Uh, I'm ready to do it getting some of the pieces situated in here uh, if you want to know if it's dry if it's tacky it's not dry yet so just wait for the tackiness to go away and uh, then you'll know but uh, in this case of installation I know that there is a fuel tank behind the seated area right here so I'm not gonna be putting any screws in there and I'm actually going to use this power grip made by Loctite. I've used it before and I know it works really well and it'll hold. But I'm not going to just smother it all over the place because then if I ever need to get these pieces of wood off for some reason, it's going to be hell. So I'm just going to put about some quarter size drops on there and uh, that should do it. The contrast from dark to light uh, really came together the way I hoped it would back here and the patterns of the grains are really eye-catching and I could stare at them for hours. Uh, if you like uh, these creative builds, hit the like button and follow along because there's more coming. Peace.